Trent, just wanted to start out by asking you a couple of questions about Drew Locke. When you're getting ready to call some of these games, what have you seen from him on tape? Well, I've had the advantage of, uh, of being around Drew Locke for a long time. He grew up in Kansas City, um, competed against my older son uh, in, in a number of games um, and sports through the years. So, uh, you know, I've been able to watch his growth as, as a player. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of good things out of him. You know, he, he's someone that, uh, and even to this day, he, he presents and has a lot of great tools. Uh, you look at everything about him and, uh, um, you know, you, you see why he's been so highly rated for such a long time, um, why he was drafted in the position he's in and, and why he's he's gone on to the NFL and had the success that he's had. So it's um, I, I, and the way I put it is it probably has more to do with experience. And I and I think him understanding that, um, you know, getting a chance to talk to him this week and we've talked to him several times already this season, having had a few of the Broncos games is, um, you know, as a quarterback, you want to get the game to slow down. Uh, and this is me speaking, not him. It's, you know, when you drop back, when you call the play, when you visualize, when you're, when you're getting those things um, put together as you're going to the line of scrimmage, you want to get everything to slow down. And, and I think the more experience he's getting, and I think the valuable experience he's, he's gained really in the last couple of weeks is going to help him moving forward. You know, uh, you look at last season, he jumped in. Uh, not everything was pretty. Not everything was perfect but they went four and one in his five starts at the end of the season. So there's really high expectations. And then, and then the pandemic hits, right? So there's no off season trying to train, no OTAs, many can, those are valuable reps that he misses. And, um, you know, and so now all of a sudden thrown in and, you know, early in week two, he gets hurt, uh, you know, his shoulder and then, you know, he's coming back. And um, so I think all those things, you know, he's working against all those things. And uh, so I think for him, it's going to be mainly experience, understanding, when to push the ball down the field, when to take the check downs, how to manage a game, all those kinds of things um, that really go along with, you know, leading, leading a team. And, and uh, you know, I think it's only going to get better. The last uh, couple of weeks, we've seen him really be able to play loose and free in the fourth quarter, but we haven't seen that so much in the first <laughs> half. What's the key for a quarterback to just get started a little bit earlier? Well, some of it is just having confidence in everything. And, you, you know, and, and um, you know, I think uh, I, I had a little fun with him uh, about his dance moves, you know, after uh, after throwing the touchdown with no time left. Um, I said, you know, did your guys give you a hard time? He said, no, they were all just excited that, you know, we were having fun, scoring points and we ended up winning the game. And uh, and I said uh, and he even said, you know, we got to get to that point where we're loose and having fun and that kind of stuff at the beginning of the game, as opposed to, you know, waiting until the end. And so some of that is just, um, you know, getting a little bit of that confidence, getting some of that swagger. And it's not just him. It's, you know, it's the offense as a, as a unit, however, they can find that to go into the game a little bit more loose. Maybe, maybe this week against the Raiders, we'll see him dancing around, not just him and specifically, but the offense just seeing mm -hmm. him. Maybe, maybe we'll see a looser, uh, offensive unit during pregame warmups and just maybe just trying to not be so pressed uh, when the game starts. It's hard to do when there's a lot of pressure on you. Uh, <laughs> yes. I yeah. Imagine, you know, you mentioned the expectations on him after going four and one last season. What do you think about the state of the NFL nowadays? Because it seems like right when these guys get to the league, they're expected to be polished yeah. quarterbacks. And, you know, certainly in your case, you know, it took a little while before you felt comfortable in the NFL. Definitely. And, and I think uh, I think there's several factors that go into that. Number one, um, football is becoming a year round sport. Right. So we, we've known uh, baseball is a year round sport. Uh, basketball is a year round sport. Soccer is definitely a year round sport. Um, hockey is a year round sport. It's, it's football because of the um, I guess the evolution and the growth of seven on seven. Um, that's becoming, so it's becoming, and it's the off season, you're doing these all-star seven on seven teams. I mean, so quarterbacks and receivers and defensive backs, linebackers, they're getting more and more reps because of, you know, I grew up playing a lot of AAU basketball. So I was a basketball junkie and that, and that's, I played it year round, but with football, there wasn't that aspect of it. It was just football season. Now it's become that. So I think, I think players and quarterbacks are developing more because of that. Uh, I think there's some trickle down effect from high school into college and now ultimately college into the NFL. Uh, there wasn't as high of expectations uh, guys coming out of college. I mean, you think about the last 20 years, um, 
you know, maybe Andy Dalton and Joe Flacco, they came in their rookie years and had success, but their teams had success. I think they both made the playoffs their first four years in the league, but for the most part, rookies have a hard time making that transition. Matt Ryan, you know, had some success, but I mean, it took some time. I mean, um, but now all of a sudden, you, you know, because the offenses have transitioned a little bit into the NFL game and guys are uh, growing as young quarterbacks and, you know, the expectations there. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, that uh, that pressure is, is much more, um, you know, is, is definitely much uh, stronger than what it was in previous years, I, I think. Uh huh. Well, the Broncos uh, tried to build around Drew Locke this offseason, brought in uh, some offensive weapons, drafted Jerry Judy with the 15th overall pick. They say that he's starting to hit his stride right now. Uh, have you seen some growth from him over the first eight weeks of the season? I definitely have. And, and uh, you talked a little bit ago about, about the pressure that Drew Locke feels. Well, imagine if you're Jerry Judy, right? You see, you've got, you know, you're coming from a program like Alabama, but you still, there's still pressure, right? There, there's an expectation and a pressure that goes into it. I think uh, uh, when you look at, um, you know, Noah Fant and, you know, you look at, uh, uh, with Lindsay in the backfield and bringing in a Melvin Gordon and you start looking at the way the AFC West is, is set up. Um, you need to have weapons. You gotta, you, you have to be able to spread the field and attack in different ways. And, and um, you know, the chiefs have done that uh, more recently in the last couple of seasons where, Hey, if you're going to take away Jerry Judy, then that's going to open up Noah fan. And if you're going to take away, you know, Noah fan, then, you know, it's, it's uh, it's kind of the blueprint right now, and so I think that was a that was a great uh, great draft. Um, I think he's only going to get better, get more comfortable, and when these guys can finally get some time to practice. I mean, I know they get limited practice, but I mean, it. I can't even tell you how many thousands of reps I had before we ever even went into a game, and I'm talking like just playing catch to going against DBs to routes versus air to, um, you know, it's they're missing out on a lot. And, and I think it's, I think it'll all come if, you know, obviously you got to stay healthy and you got to be patient, but uh, um, I do like what they're doing. Yeah. Hopefully uh, things get back to normal sometime soon here and yeah. get a uh, normal practice schedule going and stuff. Uh, the last one I had for you, Trent was, you know, you played in this AFC West division for a long time. Uh, what do you think about this rivalry between the Broncos and the Raiders? You know, it, I, I love playing in the AFC West. It was, uh, you know, every division game, it was just a slugfest. And if you look at, as I've been preparing for this game, the fact that, you know, these teams basically hold court, you know, as far as holding their home field advantage. And, and I remember, you know, with the Chiefs and, and playing the, the Broncos, we went, I, I don't know how many years, it was almost like a four or five year run where it was, you'd win at home, but it was hard to win you know, on the opposing team's field. And, and uh, that's just the, you know, that's the AFC West. Now there have been some changes. Number one, Oakland is now Las Vegas. So it's a whole different field, whole different venue, no fans. Um, that makes a big, that makes really, it does make a big difference. Um, you know, the chargers are now in LA at a new stadium, uh, even though they've been in LA, but now they're at a new stadium. Uh, Arrowhead's Arrowhead and, and mile high is mile high, but uh, you know, they're, they're much different venues without the crowd. Um, you know, I loved as a player going into stadiums um, where people were passionate about the game. And, and as much as uh, I hated fans in, in Denver and, and <laughs> Oakland and in San Diego, um, you know, there was, uh, you just knew they had a passion for their fans and everything else. So that, that I think is what's being missed in this, the, the, you know, as far as the AFC West is there's such, the rivalries, um, you know, they're rooted in such, you know, they've been around for so long. You go back to the AFL days and then the transfer over into the NFL. And it's, um, yeah, I, I love it. And I, I, I can't wait to call this game because I, I just, I know how this division works. It'll be different without fans, but I know, um, you know, I know how much it means to these guys. It'll be a little different in Vegas too. I think you're right. We're going to miss yeah. that black hole there, you know. <laughs> right. Those great fans there. So uh, Trent, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for taking some uh, time to chat here this morning. All right. Great talking with you. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk again down the road.